All right, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, we're here for the first time on a live broadcast. So it's gonna be very similar. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Wow, look, we got Michael in here, Don, Chris, Jim, Michael. Thanks a lot for stopping by. I'm just gonna be talking about the new Sony 400 millimeter that just came out. So I'm thinking that even though this is gonna be a live broadcast, chances are I'm going to have this more like a replay after the fact. So I might leave it up online as is, or I might cut it up, just depends on how long I go. I like to keep the videos as short as possible, as you guys know. So anyways, like always, it's my tea time, and we're hanging out talking about Sony, because Sony is always seems to be in the news lately. And before I get into it and really delve deep into this brand new Sony lens, what I wanted to do was ask that you guys put just a hello into the comments here, into the live comments. Um, and then what I'm gonna do at the end of the broadcast, I'm going to just select a random number, and that number is going to be kind of a distinction on the number of persons or the number of comments that came through. And that person, I'm gonna send over a PRT. A PRT looks like this, it's one of my products. It's a photo reference tool. So I'm gonna send it over to you guys as long as you're in the US, because if it's out of the US, then it's gonna cost more for me to send it to you than it is for the product itself. So if you're in the US, I'm going to send one out to you at no cost to you, either through Amazon, direct uh, ship, or I'll send it from here. Um, they're also on B&H, but one way or another, I'm gonna get one over to you for nothing. Anyways, now, the comments, like I said, that you say here that are in live, they're not gonna show up in the rebroadcast. So anything that is important, any kind of information that you have that you wanna add to the conversation besides in here, don't forget to put it in the comment area below this video once it goes live um, or once it goes Memorex, however you wanna look at it, um, so that we can have that information in perpetuity forever, right? So anyways, guys, I wanna get into this Sony 400 millimeter. This is really exciting. Let me look in here in the chats. Silsband, what's up? Jeff, Michael, we got once again, David, Griffin, a lot of guys coming on board now. Thank you so much for joining me. So like I said, this is gonna be the first time live. So there'll probably be like some problems here or there. If all of a sudden you don't hear me, put it into the comments, put it so I know that all of a sudden there's a problem. But we're right now broadcasting on a very low, let's say bandwidth stream because at the studio we don't have, we have uh, Uverse, but it's not really fast. So bear with me, my normal, feed or my normal videos are going to be a lot higher quality, but that's okay. So we'll at least uh, be able to get this out to you live. Anyways, the Sony 400 millimeter. The question that I got was the A9 that came out. We talked about this in the past and I said, well, it came out as being a, let's say represented by Sony as a sports shooter. The problem is it really wasn't a sports shooter, not because it couldn't, but there wasn't enough lenses out there to make it a sports shooter, which was a major problem. So let me switch the screen over. I wanna show you my browser real quick. That's what's great about this live. I can actually show you stuff and you don't have to see my big head all the time and that's basically it. So let me go over to, let's see, this is the camera that we were talking about, the Sony A9 and is it the sports shooter, is it not? Now the press release came through over at uh, Sony Alpha Rumors, and I'm gonna put a link in the um, description, so you'll be able to click on it and go read through this. This is really great information from directly from Sony about this lens. The lens is really big. It's about six and a half pounds, <laughs> so it's not small, made out of like magnesium alloy, right? So the question, like I said, was the A9, is it a sports shooter? And the problem was lenses. Now that this lens is out, is that A9 a sports lens. Now, there was a first impression that came out on DP Review, and here's the, matter of fact, there you can see the camera itself connected to this massive lens. Um, and uh, this, this person here, Dan, I'll butcher his name, Bacaglia or something. Anyways, he did this first impression on this lens, and he really found it to be amazing. It's the FE 400 F2.8, straight 2.8 GM, which stands for um, the, uh, the G Master lenses. 
and it is supposedly fantastic is what he said what he's saying here now for me i'm looking at this as yes now at this point it could be considered a sports shooter let's call it but only having a 400 millimeter is it enough okay when we have like nikon canon up to like 800 millimeters now you can also put on let's say a 2x like a teleconverter onto this and extend it out double you're going to lose some light so instead of 2.8 you'll be at like maybe four something five six let's call it which isn't too bad especially if you're shooting daylight but but is that enough? Right now, there's, I don't believe, a teleconverter available for it. Now, there is a teleconverter out there for, let me see here, for, I think it's a 70 to 200, but I don't think that there is a teleconverter yet. They're probably making one for this lens. Now, my understanding is this lens is going to come out, if we take a look at B&H here, it's going to be coming out in September, I believe, at $12,000, guys. So, you're not talking about a cheap lens. This is a very expensive lens. And you can see it here on B&H, 12 grand. <laughs> not cheap at all. So, but look what you're getting. You're getting a 2.8 400 millimeter. Not bad at all. So the question to me is, and I, that's what keeps on coming up, is is this now that sports shooter? I don't know. I wanna know what you guys think. Do you think that it is? Do you think that it has the ability to be that sports shooter? I got another question that came through that said, you know, this will shoot at five frames per second, the A9, and that is at, with using a flash, and 20 frames without using a flash. Well, a lot of sports are done without a flash, right, outside. But let's say if you're doing like some hockey or if you're doing something that you're more indoors, that you need that fast, long length, right, it might be an issue because you might not have all that light. And if you need to trigger flashes, what are you going to do at five frames per second? It's not bad, but five frames per second is like 2010, you know, not 2018. So I really don't know how that's going to all work out. So my question is, uh, oh, we have someone coming up with a question. The teleconverter does not indeed work with the new lens. Okay, so that's what I thought. So I guess the teleconverters that are um, made are made specific for certain pieces of glass. So like you're saying here, it's not going to work and that's what I thought would be the case. So the teleconverter that we're seeing right now, I'm gonna try popping it up on the screen here. This teleconverter I believe will only work with the 70 to 200. So we'll have to wait for it. Now, like I said, this lens will be available in September. So chances are the teleconverter will end up if they come up with it, which hopefully they do. Um, I would like to see a 1.5 as well as a 2.0. That would be cool um, to have that flexibility. Um, chances are, if it is going to be available, it will be available in September. So we'll see what ends up happening. But by that time, will an A9, let's call it a Mark II, be available that will kind of fix some of the problems that people are having with the current A9. For me, I thought that the A9 was an awesome release and I thought that it was fantastic, but my problem was that Sony really just pushed the whole point that it was a sports shooter. And a lot of the sports people are like, you know, I can't use it yet with, you know, for sports. And it's like, well, why can't you just strap on some Canon glass? Now, some folks say, yeah, you can do it. I have tried like an A7, um, let me see, it was a 2, an S2 as well as an R2 with a Metabones adapter and it was horrendous. Now supposedly Metabones has gotten better, but I hear that Sigma, I think it's the MC11 I believe it is, is better. But remember, whenever you're adapting glass, you're going to have problems with like autofocus, how fast does it track and all of the rest of this stuff. So sports is really about tracking, right? So you really need to have native prime lenses to be able to do it. And that's why this 400 really kind of hits the mark, like this person is saying when they tried it um, doing this, I think it was a soccer, um, a soccer game here. So yes, is it possible? Yes, but 
I just don't know. I really don't know how it's going to go over. My question, I guess, also to you guys is, will we see, there's a great picture of this with this orange ring, you know? Are we going to see a whole sea of orange rings in comparison to the cannon glass with the red rings, you know, the L glass? Are we going to see that eventually? I don't know. It's a possibility. I just don't know if it's going to happen, especially not as of yet. So we'll see, I guess. But anyways, like I said before, don't forget any kind of comments that you have, the questions that you have, put them in the comment area below. I always answer all these questions. This live feed is really cool because I can take a look at what you guys are saying as it is right now. And like I said, I might leave this information or leave this in, or I might chop it up later when I go and put this into the archives, but we'll see. So let me just take a look what um, people are saying here. We got Tom saying, hey, we got Trevor Current online. What's up, bro? Appreciate you being here. Um, let's see what's going on in here. It does work with the 400. Oh, really? So someone is saying that it does work with the 400. That is interesting. I thought that would be a specific uh, teleconverter, but maybe not. Maybe it'll work with all FE lenses. That could be. I'm really not sure. Um, do, 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 do. Hey, what's up, Michael? Yeah, with the World Cup. So I think that what's going to end up happening is when Photokina comes, guys, I think there's going to be this major shift. People are going to look at Photokina for a roadmap of what's to come with Sony. Because Sony has been such a major player in the news, especially as the advent, the advent of the A7 Mark III, which just was amazing at $2,000. Um, and that's why Canon and Nikon said, you know what, we cannot sit on our laurels any longer. We have to come out with a mirrorless full frame camera, right? So I think that Photokina is really going to be that turning point. We're going to see a lot of this road mapping happening. Where is Canon going? Where is Nikon going? And then what is Sony going to do? I, have, I put out a couple of videos ago. I said, you know what, Sony might go medium format. It's a possibility. But more importantly, when it comes to this topic that we're talking about, will an A9 Mark II um, be something that we see uh, at Photokina, or will it be maybe prototyped, you know, and we see it under glass, or maybe even just a hint to where it maybe will happen first quarter of 2019. I really don't know because it is a big, big deal right now. There is major wars that are, that are kind of ensuing, and especially when it starts coming to the end of 2018, the beginning of 2019. It's going to be this major shift where we're gonna start seeing Canon photographers like myself that have been doing this for 20 plus years and Nikon photographers start migrating to Sony because they're just doing it right, right? Their marketing is absolutely impeccable. They're doing a great job with marketing. Now, there's a lot of people saying, hey, you know, with Sony, we're having a problem with, you know, the menu menuing system isn't fantastic. We don't like the, you know, the ergonomics over there just doesn't feel right or, or whatever the case might be. But the bottom line is the tech, they're sticking into this cameras that they're creating in spades, guys, in spades. That includes the A7, the Mark III, the A7 uh, R3 is an amazing camera. You know, they're really doing a good job. I remember seeing the first A7 way back, um, I think it was Photo Plus Expo, probably five, six years ago now. And uh, I saw it, I was there, matter of fact, with Trevor, if you're still online. Uh, we were in New York City for the show and we looked at it, we're like, wow, this thing is truly amazing. This is amazing, a mirrorless, full frame. No one was doing it. Um, at that time, they were showing it with Zeiss glass. They were really pushing it hard that you can adapt Canon lenses to it. Um, and it was like a really big thing. I said, you know what? This is the future. And I think we're finally getting to that point where Sony is just kind of just taking up the, the market and the market share when it comes to our viewing <laughs> dollars, let's say, you know, what we're talking about. And we've been talking a lot about Sony, and rightfully so, because they're really getting it right. Especially now that we're seeing Sigma coming on board, as well as Tamarin making third-party glass for Sony. 
Now, some people are like, oh, you know, you should be wearing a Sony shirt, you know, because you're like a Sony fanboy. Well, I'm a Canon shooter. You know, I got tens of thousands of pieces of glass um, for the last 20 years on the Canon side. I'm just calling it as I see it. I'm definitely not a shill. I don't, you know, I don't, anything that I say is really what I think and not, I'm not being paid for anything that I say. So when I say that Sony's doing a good job, I really do believe it. So let me get back into the comments here. Let's see what people are saying. What's up, Steve Beats? We've got a lot of people jumping on board. Let's see here. Hey. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Yes. Yes. I do believe that also, um, that we're going to see an A7 III S possible. Um, the A7 Mark III, the A7 III S, I guess you would call it, um, or maybe an A7 IV, it could be something that might not be shown but talked about because that was such a big hit, right? It's such a big hit. But the A9 is getting to a point where Sony is going to need to revamp it. They are always on this four-month, six-month plan. They are constantly reinventing or iterating on what they already have. So definitely I'm looking for Photokina. I cannot wait to see what happens with Photokina. Let's see what, what else we got here. Teleconverters work with this, all right. Yeah, that's what we we're saying as far as the teleconverters. It would be nice, I don't know. Let's see what else. Yeah, I agree, Chris, that, <laughs> that Canon needs to step it up, you know. Uh, Canon has been really just sitting on the laurels for so long that every time they put out a camera, the Canon guys get really excited about it, like myself, right? And it's just a disappointment. Uh, they do it with everything. It doesn't really matter which camera. It could be their mirrorless, um, like their M50, or I think it's called a Kiss M, wherever you are in the world. But, you know, they did 4K and then they neutered the 4K, right? They cropped it and then they double cropped it which was just horrendous. And then what did they do? On top of that, they ended up turning off DPAF, right? So you don't have dual pixel AF working if you're in 4K. What are you doing? Canon does this all the time. I just don't get it. I really don't get it. They did the same thing with the 5D Mark IV with their 4K. Problems, problems, problems. They, I understand that they don't want to cannibalize their other lines. Their C line is what I use when it comes to video, a C300, the C200, whatever. Really just amazing video machines. And I know they don't want to put all of their goodness into some of the lower end machines because they want to keep that cinema line going. But by so doing and having to neuter their other cameras, People like Sony that don't care, they're just constantly putting the best of the best into the cameras. For example, with the a7 III, I mean, they, they didn't leave anything out. I mean, the kitchen sink they threw in there, pretty much. So, you know, seeing that, Canon, you know, like you're saying, needs to step up. Nikon needs to do the same thing. They've been really sitting back. I was really nervous that they were going to end up just going belly up on their photo division with all of those recalls that happened last year, right? With the D750. I said the D850 was either going to make Nikon or break them. And the D850 has been mega. It's like a superstar. It's a really, really great camera. No matter that Sony is making the sensor or not, they're still doing the production back end of that sensor. I still think Nikon should get away from the Sony sensor if possible, so they're not sharing their internal information, let's just call it, you know, their special sauce with Sony. But at this point, it might not really matter, you know? They are putting in all of that goodness and they're really pulling a lot out of it. So, you know, we'll see what ends up happening with it all. Let me see what else, A9, yep. <laughs> I think, uh, I think a lot of people are going to see that the A9 will be really dropping in price. I said it was about $500 to $800 overpriced in my personal opinion. Um, and I really believe that to be the case. The A9 came in, I think it was like $4,500 or so, whatever. I think that camera should have been at about $3,900. But uh, as of now, there's been rebates and whatnot that bring it under that sub $4,000 mark. Now. I talked about this in a couple of videos ago, and I'll get back to the A9 just in a second, but we want to keep an eye on, in my personal opinion, what happens with that dark horse that I call them, which is Fujifilm. 
Um, their medium format is really exceptional. Right now it's like $6,500, but they are threatening to put out a medium format uh, mirrorless camera soon that will be sub $4,000. Now, of course, we're gonna have to worry about glass. Are they gonna be able to come out with glass quick enough? And there's a lot of things that go into coming up with something brand new like that. But that's something to look out for for Photokina. Um, is Fujifilm going to do that? If they did and continue to do what they're doing, whereas they're circumventing full frame altogether, right? Full frame mirrorless, they're not doing it. They're doing APS-C and they're doing medium format. So if they do that and they move, you know, like I said, circumventing full frame and go into a medium format, have lenses for it, and then be able to get it sub $4,000, they're not gonna put, pick up the sports shooters, because they're not sports shooters that aren't gonna be you know, shooting medium format anytime soon, but they can pick up a big chunk of professional portraiture photographers, right? So we'll see what Fuji does with that. Now, back to the A9. Let me see, Tom comes in here, Sony sensors used in there, other brands, yes, absolutely. That is true, Tom. Um, do, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, the, the, the future is here. I have, to, I have to agree with you. Um, let's see here. Are you gonna keep your Canon glass, just in case it's full frame? Really? Yeah, so, like I said a couple of minutes ago, um, I love Canon glass. I have a ton of L glass. I enjoy shooting Canon. It's not that I don't, I, I love it. Now, you know, will I be moving to Sony anytime really soon? Probably not, but I have my eye on them. I have my thumbs on the pulse, okay, on what's going on. And if Canon doesn't really turn around by the end of this year, it's going to be a possibility. As far as the glass goes, I would probably keep my glass um, if they're able to come up with a method of using it properly, okay? Because I've had too much bad experience with Metabones. Um, I have not tried Sigma as of yet. The I think it's the MC11. I haven't tried it. I hear it really does a good job, but I wanna be able to shoot my lenses as, as such, as good as if they were native lenses. If I can't, I would probably end up getting rid of all of the Canon gear and going Sony, if I was to do that and not keeping it and using this adaptive type thing. I'm just not an adaptive proponent. And that's why I was saying also a few um, vlogs ago that I hope that Canon does not do Nikon and Nikon will be doing this uh, adapter and they're saying that that adapter to adapt their FE lenses to their mirrorless body um, is going to be okay. It's not gonna be as good as if you bought, let's say, um, native glass for it by doing that adaptive. Now, if Canon can somehow figure this out, I don't know how they're gonna do it, but if they were a way to figure out how to use the current EF lenses on their mirrorless body by making maybe a bigger body, maybe, a sensor that's, that moves in and out, maybe their curve sensor that, is, that can be manipulated, all kinds of things that they can do to make it happen. If they were to do that, I think that would be a big major revolution, okay? Things would change there just uh, it, big time, all right? Because then at that point, all of these millions of pieces of uh, Canon glass that are out there since, you know, whenever the 30s, whenever they started, but all those pieces of glass will be able to go snap right onto that mirrorless brand new body. Um, that would be a big, big, big thing. Will it happen? Probably not, but it's something to talk about and something to think about because if it was to happen, I mean, there's going to be a, there would be a lot of Canon shooters that wouldn't even look at Sony anymore. Okay, they'd be like, I'm really happy with the glass that I currently have. I think it's fantastic, and I'm just going to go mirrorless, and I'll just trade out this body, or maybe I'll keep a DSLR, and maybe I'll use a second body that would be mirrorless to just to get my feet, you know, kind of wet. That's a possibility also. It's hard for like a Canon guy or a Nikon go, guy to go Sony because it's all new stuff, you know, new flashes, new triggers, new grips, new everything, right? So it's a big investment. So a lot of times when people go Sony, they just get rid of everything and they just go Sony. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, let's see, Chris says 20 uh, FPS, no blackout. Wow, yeah, absolutely. 
The, let me see here, I agree the uh, D850 is an excellent camera, but the issue is Nikon. Uh, six, eight months. Yeah, no, I know. So I think that Nikon and Sony, I mean, Nikon and Canon are behind the eight ball, no matter what, okay? They really are. And it's their own doing, okay? Sony's been doing this since, like, what is it, five years ago when they started. Um, I understand that, like I said, Canon doesn't want to cannibalize their other um, cameras, but I think they should have came on board with this a lot sooner, in my personal opinion. It just would have, it would have to me made sense to be able to do that because a lot of people are looking at it like, just like for example for me, what have you been doing? Why are you sitting on your laurels for so long? You know, do, do you not read the news? <laughs> do you not see what's going on? Do you know what the vloggers are talking about? And they're not talking good stuff about Canon or Nikon very much when it comes to this whole mirrorless thing because there just wasn't anything out there to even talk about, especially on full frame. There is nothing, right? So, yeah, <laughs> Michael does not like the Metabones adapt adapter. <sighs> I don't know. You know, I don't like to talk bad about any uh, specific brand, but I just haven't had good experience with it. That's just my experience. Other people might say, you know, Metabones is just the cat's meow. Um, you know, Michael, I don't, I don't know. I just was not able to get it to work well. I've had people say, listen, download the latest firmware and you're going to get a lot better results. I don't know. I really don't know. I just saw someone just recently. I wish I knew their name. They had a, they, they did a review, um, testing out their L glass on the, I think it was an A7R3 and they used the latest and greatest. I think it was a Metabones adapter and, uh, they just, it just wasn't there. It just didn't work well. When it, come, when it came to tracking, eye tracking, um, just quick um, focus, it just didn't, it wasn't snappy. And the whole idea of using an adapter and using, you know, a Canon lens, for example, is because you want the longer glass, right? You want glass that you can't get already from Sony or from Sigma or for Tamron now that are making E-mount glass, right? So you're going to want the longer glass. Now, what are you going to do that? What do, you, what do you want that for? Well, you're going to use it for sports, chances are, or something, maybe wildlife or whatever. Um, but you want something that's going to lock up and stay locked up. And you want to burst 20 frames per second and know that you're tracking the bird or burst 20 frames per second and, you know, tracking the soccer player or whatever the case might be. And if that Metabones is not going to be able to do it or any adapter is not going to be able to do it. You just can't go down that road. That's just my personal opinion, you know, when it comes to it. Um, what else we got here? Oh, you had two Metabones adapters. Eh, it's a no-go. Yeah, I, I don't know. I actually had two also, um, but I did not upgrade the firmware when I was doing this, uh, my testing. If you go back about 125 videos ago or so, you'll find a test where I did all of my L-Glass on a Sony A7 um, R2 and the Sony A7 um, S2, and I used the Metabones uh, with all that glass, and it was just... I mean, you can just go watch it. I mean, I did real, <laughs> real live review on it, and you can actually see it. It's just like hunting. You know, you hear it. Nye, nye, nye. It's just a, it was a hot mess. I mean, that's just the way it was. Um, yeah, all native. I mean, that's really the way to go. Let's see here. Yeah, no, I, I know, I know. The, as Nick says here with the, with the Sony A9, um, you know, it's smaller. For, for me, okay, if I'm going to be shooting something that I'm going to use longer glass, even like a 70 to 200. Now, you know, I've used the A7. I've used the A7R2, the R3. To hold it um, without a grip is very difficult, even with, you know, a 7-pound, you know, 7, uh, 70 to 200. Uh, f2.8. For me, I have big hands. It just doesn't work well, but other people like that smaller form factor. For me, I would have to snap on um, a grip. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as soon as you go to 400 millimeters, it really doesn't matter. That thing is like, you know, a trash can at the end of like this little tiny camera. So it's just massive. You're going to need a monopod um, or a good tripod. I would use a video type style tripod. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, let's see. What's up? ICO Safari. 
Let's see, A9, A7, OK. Yeah, so, you know, what I've noticed with a lot of the folks that have went, the, a lot of the pros that went from a Canon or a Nikon to a Sony, a lot of them are not sports shooters. A lot of them are um, portrait guys, uh, landscape shooters, where having that snappy autofocus is not as important because you're really going to dial it in most of the time, for example, manual if you're doing landscape, if you're doing portrait, it, you can have that little bit of a leeway where it doesn't need to be just snappy really, really quick. So that's what I've been seeing a lot of people moving on to like an A9 or even an A7, R3 for the extra megapixels, 43 or whatever it is, a ton of megapixels. I've been seeing a lot of that. So. So Steve says you really uh, do get used to the size. So I could, I could imagine that. He was a, sh a Canon shooter and then switched uh, to Sony. So, and now, and now he says that it, uh, it feels hollow and bloated and slug, uh, like a big slug. So yeah, I can see that. I can definitely see that. I mean, the Sony camera is just like anything else. Whatever you get used to using for a long period of time. Um, you know, here you have Steve where he, you know, he went from, you know, Canon over to Sony and it's not a problem after you get used to it after a while. And I can see that being the case. You know, what you get used to is what you get used to. You know, my, like I was saying, you know, are we going to see that sea of orange rings when the Olympics come? Um, that is my question. You know, Sony is the master of marketing, guys. They are the master of marketing. And if they can push out like maybe even a longer lens, you know, 600, 800, um, na like a native piece of glass, like a GM, like a, you know, a G Master um, before the Olympics. Will we see a lot of people move into Sony and start seeing that sea of orange rings instead of red rings, you know, in black lenses, a Nikon? That would be very, very interesting. I would love to see it. You know, all right, so like I always say, I am not a fanboy of any system. I love them all. Okay, there's, there's a reason, there's a time and place for everything, all right? So when I look at it, I'm just really just looking at it as a photographer that's been doing this forever, right? Whenever I do, and I've told you guys this in the past, if I do fashion, I'm using Hasselblad. Why? Because I want all of the pixels, okay? I need a lot of pixels to push around. So there is a camera for every job and for every photographer, but, but no camera does it all, right? No camera does it all. So you have to get the camera that is best for you. Someone asked me just recently, they said, you know, what camera should I buy? I currently have X, Y, and Z, and I was thinking about moving to a new camera. And the, the, my question to them is, what do you do with it? And is everything that you're currently doing, is it doing it well? Is it doing it good enough? And do you know the system? Is it easy to use? Most case, I would say don't buy a new camera body because buy, buying a camera body is like toilet paper. You're throwing it away in three to six months. There's no value, all right? Buy lenses. Lenses, I always say, are forever. Are they forever? Probably not so much now that we're really moving into a lot of different things going on, but they are a lot. There's a lot more longevity to it. So for me, I put a lot of money into lenses and I put less into camera bodies. I'll buy sometimes camera bodies a year old. I might buy them refurbished or used. It doesn't matter as much to me as long as it does what I need it to do. And if it doesn't, I will rent in the cameras that I need to get the job done. Like I said, if I'm going to do a large video um, for a client, I'm going to bring in C300s, multiples. Okay, why? Because they have a massive fan in them like this. You never have to worry about heat up. They have XLR coming out of them. You know, they are just amazing. They will run continuously for, you know, three, four, five hours straight. And I can strap on all of my L glass to it. So it just does a job well. So like I said, there's always the perfect camera for everyone and for whatever the job is. Let's see what else we got going on here. Chris, listen, okay. Nah, nah might use the MC-11. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things, Chris, about the MC-11. Um, you know, between that and the Metabones, MC-11 has just been amazing. It's not really, really expensive, and it is just good. Um, a lot of good reviews. I would say, you know, go on to YouTube, do a search for Metabones versus MC-11, that's a Sigma, um, and just, see what you get. I think you'll be surprised. 
on how much positive feedback that you get on it. It's really, it's really amazing to me. I wish that I used it when I did my review of the, you know, the A7S2 and the A7R2 um, with all of my lenses because they probably would have changed my mind. But the thing is, is at that time, it wasn't around. So I really couldn't. Anyways, let's see. Um, M5 adapter works perfectly with all Canon lenses. That is um, all right. So that's Mike over there saying that he's, he's got no problem using it with his M5. Um, I like the M5. Uh, I think there's going to be an M5 Mark II. I'm just putting it out there um, not too long from now. I think that they will probably, by the nomenclature that we see on the release numbers and the release uh, data as far as what's coming out, those numbers, those codes. It seems like Canon's going to be coming out with at least one or two new APS-C that will be uh, mirrorless and a couple of APS-C that are just going to be standard DSLRs. I'm going to say that that one will probably be on the mirrorless side, maybe like a M5 Mark II. On the DSLR side, I'm seeing probably an 80D, a little bit long in the tooth. They might come out with a 90D, maybe change that nomenclature from 90D and keep the 90D off and do like, for example, an 80D Mark II. That could possibly happen. That probably makes more sense to me if they did that so they can keep the 90D, 90T, Mark II, Mark III, or whatever they want to do um, for future. So we'll see what happens with that. But if Canon does come out with an 80D Mark II or 90D, whatever, um, I'll be probably the first one to put in a pre-order for it because I'm using an ADD for all of my videos. Not right now. I'm using just a Logitech uh, webcam, which is kind of horrible. But, um, you know, for me, the ADD just does a spectacular bang-up job when it comes to this type of video. It tracks amazing. Um, you know, the DPAF, the dual pixel AF is just unbelievable. There's, there's, there's nothing like it, nothing out there. I mean, every other company has tried something like uh, DPAF and they just haven't been able to match Canon's. Maybe it'll come soon, but as of right now, it's not out there. Um, let's see what else we got here. Do, do, do. So, yeah, so for me, I would have to say that kind of coming full circle, um, not to leave, make this too long. Um, I think that the A9 Mark II will be introduced like right around by Photokina, if not by the beginning of uh, 2019. I also do think by seeing this lens, okay, and looking at it and knowing that it's already been used on the field and the guy was really getting, this guy Dan was getting some really great results with it. I can see this being that lens that brings more sports shooters to the Sony side. Now, do I think there's going to be a mass exodus from Nikon and um, Canon anytime soon? I don't think so. Not when it comes to sports, when it comes to landscape and when it comes to portraiture and wedding and all the rest of this stuff, I don't think that there's a problem. I don't think there's that much of a problem to bring people in, especially like I said, now that they have that third party glass out there with Tamron as well as Sigma. But I wanna know what you guys think, all right? I'm gonna kinda of close this up. Like I said, I'm gonna go down this list. I'm gonna pick a random person out of these comments and I'm gonna send you guys over a free PRT so you guys can use it for um, what you guys do. I use this all the time for dialing in color. It works out awesome. On the back side, I have my dual access color control for getting the color just right. I invented this about two or three years ago. You can find this on B&H, you can find it on Amazon and all over the place. If you guys haven't taken a look at my focus pyramid, go check that out. Go over to my website, jchristina.com. Check that out. The focus pyramid I invented right around 2011. It has calibrated tens of thousands of lenses worldwide for video shooters and photo shooters all over the place. And um, once again, you can find that on b &H, on Amazon, on my website, wherever. Um, now, keep in mind, if I pick you as far as that winner of the PRT, do me a favor, go over here to jchristina.com forward slash contact and send me over your first name, last name, your email, as well as your city, state, zip code, and your address so I can get that over to you. So that's really about it, guys. I want to say thank you so much for joining me on this live broadcast. Any kind of comments that you have, 
about it, you know, what I can do different, what works, what doesn't work. I'm gonna change this over to my big head cam. But anyway, so if anything, you know, that any kind of suggestions that you have as far as this live broadcast, let me know. As far as the quality goes, I have it maxed out now as far as my bandwidth, so I really am not going to be able to get the quality any way, any, any better than what we're getting as far as the live stream. But when we go, let's say, Memorex and I upload a copy, if I do, it's going to look a little bit better. It's still going to be using this Logitech um, HD Pro, I think it's called a Brio, uh, which is not bad. It's not bad. It's a $200 camera, but it's not the ADD in, by any means. So, but let me know what you think about the live broadcast. So that's really it about guys. I'll talk to you later. Do me a favor. As always, please throw me a big thumbs up if you enjoy my content. If you do, smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it comes available and click the bell icon so when it is available, you will be notified of it. And don't forget, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all of my photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. Once again, thank you for joining me. Appreciate it. Happy shooting. We'll see you soon. Take care, guys.